A sweet potato is propagated from slips. A slip is a green shoot that emerges from a mature tuber, and each tuber can sprout up to 15 plants. When you select a tuber, biggest is not best. Try to choose tubers that aren't bigger than two inches in diameter. They take about eight weeks to grow slips big enough to plant outside. There's three methods to sprout slips, dry, water, and soilless mixture. So we're gonna talk about dry first. The dry method is you just put them in a dark closet for four weeks. You put each tuber in a paper bag, and I just use like lunch bags, and then pack them on a tray or on a, uh, or on a shelf in your closet. You're gonna need to have really good air ventilation, but here's the, here's the trick. The ideal temperature needs to be 75 to 85 degrees with 90% humidity, or what I like to think of as just a typical spring day here in Austin. But you have to keep them in the dark and you should see sprouts in about two weeks from there. If you don't see any sprouts, it might be too cold in the closet and that's exactly what's happened to me here. So not enough heat in my closet and probably not enough humidity. The next method is wet. And what you're gonna do there is you're gonna actually suspend them in water. And if you have large tubers, you can cut them up in half and then use sturdy uh, toothpicks to suspend them in a jar. I'm just using a pint jar here. Add enough water to submerge the tuber about halfway up and set it in a warm area with indirect light. You're gonna wanna change your water to keep things from rotting or smelling. And it doesn't, it also helps to spray it a little bit just to keep the humidity up. The other way to do it is through the soilless mixture. What you're gonna do is fill a container with some damp potting soil or perlite, and I'm using vermiculite here. You put the tuber in, and then you just cover it up with about two inches. I like using chicken containers. Uh, ro like rotisserie chicken containers that you get at the store. You're gonna cover this container with a plastic wrap or the lid and then keep it, uh, keep it in again in a warm area of the house where it can get indirect light. You should see sprouts again emerging in about four weeks. You harvest the slips when they get to be about six inches long and have several leaves. You're just gonna pull them, you're gonna snap them off or slip them off of the tuber once they're six inches and plant them. When you order slips, they may come without roots, and that's okay, many commercial producers actually prefer this because it prevents soil transfer from farm to farm. You wanna put the slips in loose, well-drained soil when the soil is warmed up enough to about 65 degrees, and for Austin, that's not until like Easter around April 15th, but you can wait until May. I no normally don't put mine out until May. If there's no roots on the slip, plant at least two leaf nodes beneath the soil line. If they do have roots, make sure to bury all the roots beneath the soil line. You're gonna plant them 12 to 80, 18 inches apart, at least three feet between the rows so that the vines have plenty of room to run. Keep the soil moist until the slips have rooted properly at least a week and then irrigate normally. Sweet potatoes like dry soils and will rot if overwatered. People ask, why not just plant the whole potato? So your new potato starts will be too close together and won't produce nice tubers, and they'll probably rot and smell bad, which can attract rats or your dog. And that happened to me. Penny went out, dug them up, and rolled in it. Don't let that happen to you. It's easy to overplant when you're starting slips on your own because you have so many. So be sure that you've got neighbors and friends all lined up ready to receive the bounty and plenty of recipes to enjoy your sweet potatoes.